In this video, we are going to discuss and implement about CNN on MNIST handwritten digits dataset. Now you can see this is a kind of handwritten digits dataset and building a digit classifier using this MNIST dataset. It is a large dataset of handwritten digits that is commonly used for training various image processing systems. The database is also widely used for training and testing in the field of machine learning. So what we're going to do is firstly we're going to import the libraries and the core data structure of Keras is a model and a way to organize its layer that we must know that we have seen also in the fashion MNS data set. The simplest way or we can say the simplest type of model is a sequential model. So sequential model is actually a linear stack of layers which we have discussed and using sequential function we can define our architecture. Next is a dense layer. Now this dense layer is regularly deeply connected neural network layer. Then we have a dropout function also. Now this dropout function is used for dropping out the waste so as to reduce the overfitting. We have an activation function also which decides whether a neuron should be activated or not. It can be seen as a digital neural network of activation function. That means on when it is set one given as a value or off depending that is zero which is depending on the input. We have flatten function also to flatten the input that does not affect the batch size. It just simplifies the array that means converts it into one dimension that we have seen in our previous video where we are discussing about the working of CNN. Next is convolution 2D. Now what is this convolution 2D? Is a convolutional operator for filtering windows of two dimensional input. Similarly, we have max pooling 2D also. What does it does? It is used for max pooling, which we have seen that it finally checks the maximum value and re return it into an array of smaller size. So that we will do in max pooling also. And then we will split our data into the test set and train set. We will scale the data also and then we will finally train our model after building it and then predict the accuracy and then do several predictions also. This we are going to do completely with the code in which I have explained you also. Now let us switch to the code. So here you can see that firstly I have imported the necessary packages for our module which is there and I have loaded the MNS dataset also from TensorFlow Clear Garage and I have imported the con 2 d layer also, max pool 2D, dense flattened dropout also and plot model is used to plot the model that I will discuss later on. So now I have to execute the cell first and next what we have done in the second cell here you can see that we have loaded the MNS data set and split it into X train, Y train, X test and Y test. This means we have loaded the MNS data set and the MNS data set has 60,000 images for training set and 10,000 images for the test set. All images are grayscale and the size of 28 cross 28 pixels. Now let's load the data set and then reshape it to have a color channel 1 because MNS data set has grayscale. Here you can see it has a grayscale image so we have set the color channel 1 in the reshape. So that we have done here in the reshape you can see that and this query is okay also. Next you can see here we have normalized the value of pixel of images that we have done while we are operating with the MNS fashion data set also that we have normalized the value so that a scaling can be done of the pixels of the images. So that we have done on the X train and the X test data set there. Normalizing is done so that pixel values of each image in the data set are unsigned integers in the range between 0 to 255. We can normalize these pixel value to have a range between 0 to 1. What it does is it improves the performance of the model. So if any question arises in your mind that why do we normalize the images just to improve the performance of your model. Because the value ranges from 0 to 255 and we want to scale it or we can say normalize the pixel value in the range between 0 to 1. So that's why we do the scaling part of images. So the scaling part and we can say normalizing the value of pixels is done. Next what we are going to do is we are going to plot the images which are there. That means I just want to show you that what are the images in the data set there by plotting them. So we have done that also using the plt.figure so we have given a figure size also and I want to show the first 15 set of images which is there.
So what we have done here, we have added a subplot and I have given the ranges of subplot also and then set a title also of the Y train I. And as I execute this particular cell, you will see that a set of 15 images will be displayed to you. Here you can see that 5, 0, 4, 1, 9, 2, 1. So title according to that is also set according to the train set of images and obviously the handwritten digits which are there. So firstly it has the 5 set in the top column it has 10 and later on it has 5. So 15 first set of images I have shown you which are there. That is the plotting of images. Now if you want to check the shape of the single image. So how can you do that? You can simply check creating a variable of the x train dot shape and then you can print that respective size also. So here such as if I want to check the shape of the image which is there. So I can determine the shape of the image like this. That is 28 cross 28 and 1 is determining the grayscale images which are there because they are in black and white you can see it. So each image has a shape of 28 cross 28 cross 1. 1 indicates the channel which I have said that it has only one color channel in the grayscale images which is there. So we have checked the shape of the image also. Now we define the model that take the input and for that we have I have already discussed it with you that we are taking the sequential model. Now here is the thing to see that how we build a particular model. So firstly we define the model which is there that is sequential. Then we add the convolution layer. Now here there are several parameters which need to be known. 32, the first layer is 32. So we add two convolutional layer along with the max pooling layer into the model. And then we add dropout layer. This we have also seen in stacking the layer also while I discussed you that you can add the iterative convolution and the max pool layer and then finally out the dropout layer also while we are discussing the working of CNN. So here you can see that the very first parameter is 32 that represents that this particular convolutional layer has 32 filter and this is giving the size of the filter the matrix which we used as kernel that particular size we have given here then the activation function is given and finally the input size is given max pool in pooling also we have given that we flattened the imagined result into vector of two cross row which we studied while we were doing the maximum pooling also that you can have your own parameters of maximum pooling also we have taken here a 2 cross 2 matrix that why we have given that dropout 0.5 that means removing the overfitting 0.5 means 50 percent of weights will be removed dense is actually used here that reminds the neural network the network layer of neural has we can say 500 nodes which are there and the output layer you can say has 10 that is having soft max layer and activation functions we have given. So this is how we build a particular model and these are the parameters which is there. Next if you want to check the model summary for that we have a function dot summary with the help of that you can check the model summary also. So this is the model summary and this is how it builds you can see there is a convolutional layer then a max pooling is done. Then again a convolutional iteration or you can say stacking up of layers has been done and finally the dense layer comes out to be there. Next you can hear is a thing that I have here plotted the model also to display you that how the model will actually look and I have saved that with the name model.jpg and show shapes I have made that true that parameter I have said as true. So what it does here you can see that if that particular feature is not quite well visible to you that what is happening here then you can see like this a convolution input layer has been made where input size is given and output is given. Similarly the max pooling layer is also there and then the size you can see has been reduced and then again a convolutional layer that is what I am saying you is the stacking up of layer being done which we discussed while we are doing CNN also. So I guess this is quite clear to you. And here you can see that how each layer is connected to the other layer in the sequence. For that only I use this particular function for plotting the model that is plot model. And here also you can see in your collab session this particular image will be saved that is model.jpg. We have saved that image also. Next moving on what we need to do is the model architecture has been done. Now we need to train the model. Now that we have a better understanding of a model, let's train our model into the train data set and validate on the validation data set. The fit function is used and has validation split parameter to control the amount of validation data. The verbos has value, here you can see that, has a value of 0 and 2. If it is a set of 0, then we cannot see the performance of the model during the training process. So while I want to see it, so that's why I have made it 2. That is for the visibility also we have said. Now we have given epochs equals to 10. So 10 e epochs will keep on executing and then it will generate several things that is the loss which has been done and things like that and the accuracy and the value loss which is there and the value accuracy it is going to determine here. Next we are only left with testing the model by checking the accuracy and then doing several predictions. 
So the epoch execution has been completed and next we need to test the accuracy of our model and as I execute this particular cell here you can see that the accuracy is quite good and now we need to verify the performance also by making several predictions. So here you can see that what I have done from the image I have stored an image variable the extreme and I want to check the image which is at the fifth position at the fixed index also we can say and then with the help of imshow I want to digit I want to display the digit which is there whose label we want to predict and as I execute this particular cell then it's displaying that at a fifth index there is true now this is a prediction made now let us verify the prediction also that which is there so what we have done here we have reshaped that particular image only and then with the model dot predict image we now want to check that is the predicted label correct or not as I execute this particular cell it returns that predicted two that means it's predicting the correct thing and our model has successfully predicted the image of the digit two which is there. So I hope now you have a better understanding of CNN for MNS digit classification with TensorFlow and the referral notes will be given to you and the link is mentioned in the video description.